Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to uh, explain the relationships between the uh, executive branch managers, and the appointed uh, managers, the appointed officials, and the uh, judiciary. When we analyze, when we watch, when we explain the uh, executive behavior, we we'll find that uh, when they are managing programs, when they are managing uh, governmental organizations, uh, at so many times they show what is called uh, quasi legislative actions and quasi judicial actions. And while they are uh, practicing uh, quasi legislative actions, in doing so, uh, even though they explain the details of the uh, legislations, but they, uh, so many times, they have to uh, practice rule making. They uh, set rules for uh, for how to implement programs and, and uh, uh, rules regarding who will benefit from the programs, standards for for the programs. All, all of these things uh, fall under the umbrella of rule making. So uh, this uh, creates a relationship between them and the judiciary uh, branch, branch. And also uh, their, their behavior sometimes exemplify and show quasi-judicial uh, behavior. And, and uh, the following parts will explain this, uh, these two behaviors, the quasi-legislative and the quasi-judicial actions. The relationship between administrative agencies and the ju judiciary drives from the legal foundations of administrative actions, some of which are called quasi-legislative and, and others are called quasi-judicial. Those that are quasi-legislative uh, elaborate the details of the legislation. You heard from me so many times that uh, even though legislatures uh, make the uh, de debate and, and develop and, and make policies through legislations, uh, but actually, those who said the details, the procedures through which legislations are implemented and programs are created are actually those who make policies. So, uh, as we have noted, those and most legislation is necessarily and intentionally general leaving considerable room for interpretation or discretion on the part of the administrator because after all the administrators they have uh, uh, good knowledge they have uh, experience as uh, we all know by now regarding how how their governmental agencies are, are managed and about how the programs should be should be implemented they are the uh, the persons who have the complete knowledge regarding programs and the agencies and and as an example an agency may be required by law to set safety standards for nuclear powered electric utilities but they receive little guidance about which specific standards should be employed and adopted the agency would seek then to determine appropriate standards. After all, there are no standards, so they have to set those standards by themselves and then develop rules to govern implementation of the legislation. And here they would be viewed as making uh, rule making, and that falls under the umbrella of the uh, uh, judicial branch of government. Rulemaking in general is uh, concerned 
with establishing general guidelines that would apply to class of uh, people or a class of actions in the future. <clears throat> in most cases, rulemaking is fairly straightforward, involving uh, notice, comment, and steps to ensure an adequate record. In other cases, legislation requires greater detail and great formality in the rulemaking process. Uh, as an example, food, the Food and Drug Administration regulations and uh, others that involve high risk require a formal rulemaking process, very specific process and very specific steps. Formal rulemaking procedures require that the agency issue its rule only after trial time hearing procedures are completed. Several important provisions were added. Uh, these included measures that reduce regulatory demands in some circumstances involving smaller uh, for-profit, non-profit and public sector organizations. Administrative agencies not only must take into account the impact of new regulations on smaller agencies, but also must ensure a requisite level of flexibility in the uh, rules to accommodate agency compliance and uh, reporting without adding to administrative costs. So, uh, so it's requisite that uh, agencies must have some, uh, some uh, room for flexibility in, during the implementation. Other administrative actions are quasi-judicial in that they produce orders relating to individual cases, they judge individual cases, they set rules for individual cases. For example, following the issuance of uh, safety standards for nuclear power plants, an administrator might have to decide if a particular planet has met those standards. So it would be as if the administrator is, uh, is judging the, uh, the planets, is judging the uh, individual uh, cases. Similarly, an administrator might have to decide if a specific individual is eligible for uh, works compensation or not. And here again, the administrator would be assuming a judicial uh, role. In such cases, the administrator is making decisions that determine one's state St status under the law. The substantive decisions are obviously important, but so are the procedures under which they are resolved. For example, a woman denied uh, welfare support might request a hearing to argue her case before a final decision is made. The administrator's decision to grant or refuse the hearing represents another kind of quasi-judicial administrative action. So here we find that during the implementation, during the management of different programs, administrators, they, they, make, they make decisions which have uh, legal uh, uh, consequences uh, uh, regarding those affected by the uh, decisions. In quasi-judicial administrative actions, often called adjudication, procedural issues such as those we just mentioned are of special importance. There is a desire that citizens be treated fairly and, and uh, not, not, not randomly and they should not be subjected to arbitrary decisions. Consequently, where standards of due process are applied, a notice of the proposed action must be given, and 
there must be a chance for the affected party to respond and have a room to, to defend and to explain their case. And there must be an independent decision maker and an opportunity for, for appeal, exactly as if the person is standing in front of a court. The judicial review. The, the courts may review administrative actions in rulemaking, in education, in other areas through what's called judicial review. And, and here emerges the relationship with the uh, judicial branch, uh, a, co a complete, uh, uh, an outright interaction with the judicial uh, branch through the judicial review. Such review typically occurs when a party suffering legal wrong because of any action from the agency or uh, adversely affected or aggrieved by agency action. If they have grievances, they, uh, they uh, go to court and they, uh, they all are uh, presenting their, their case in front of the court. And uh, those affected, of course, when they go to court, they will be seeking uh, judicial remedy solutions. The court reviews the case in light of constitutional, statutory, and executive provisions and determine the appropriateness of the administrative action. And generally speaking, the courts may find that the administrative action or decisions are unlawful and set aside agency actions that are unconstitutional, that extend beyond the limits of the statutory uh, authority, that are arbitrary, capricious, or an abuse of discretion, that are procedurally unfair or without substantive justification. However, following the Supreme Court's finding, if a statute is silent or ambiguous with respect to the issue at hand, the agency's interpretation of the statute must be upheld if its interpretation is a reasonable one. The deference to administrators underlying Chevron, which is, uh, Chevron is a position referred to as a contemporaneous administrative construction, uh, which stems from the court's belief that an administrative agency responsible for implementing a piece of uh, legislation, uh, of course, had the most knowledge of the policy and of existing legislation concerning the issue. The courts may uh, then uh, ultimately disagree with the agency interpretation, but they start with a heavy presumption that the agency was correct uh, according to uh, the conviction that the, that the agency is, is more knowledgeable about uh, the work and the nature of uh, its work and the nature of legislations and uh, the procedures for implementing legislations. And although some suggest that uh, Chevron is being called into question, recent Supreme Court decisions have reinforced the doctrine of uh, judicial deference to administrative agencies. They refer things to the discretion of the administrative agencies. And here the Supreme Court has continued to, uh, to take a very firm position to enforce the Chevron standard based on the principle that unless legislators uh, give clear direction to the administrative agency, the administrator's interpretation must be upheld as long as it is permissible under the statute. On the other hand, 
the courts have established parameters for Chevron limiting the standard to uh, regulatory measures and to circumstances in which the administering agency clearly acts within the confines of the statute. The courts have maintained that the petitions regarding administrative issues uh, but whose primary concerns relate to legal matters such as contracts should be viewed as a question of law clearly within the competence of the courts. Despite these limitations, the consistency with which the court has reinforced Chevron and in light of the lower court decisions during the same period, it can be presumed that the judiciary would maintain the capacity and the scope of administrative agencies into the post-Chevron era. And what we said so far should not be understood that uh, in, a, in a way which means that the court always uh, makes decisions in favor of the uh, administrative agency, uh, but uh, courts sometimes uh, rules in favor of the administrative agency and some other times they, they do not and of uh, particular interest are those cases in which the court determines that the agency has misinterpreted or gone beyond the intent of the legislation and here the court uh, rules down the case for the agency and, and impose the uh, rules which must be uh, witnessed, which must be adopted by the uh, administrative agency. Uh, next week, we are going to uh, conclude uh, that part regarding the relationship between the uh, administrative agency, the executive branch, and the judiciary branch. However, I may also uh, tell you what you guys want to do uh, in case of the final exam or whether you're going to uh, get examined uh, electronically on, on, on the net on the uh, university's uh, site. And until then, stay safe.